Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on life through music. Welcome and thank you for stopping by. It is fantastic that you are here. Well, I trust you enjoyed my last video on the band The Birds. And through this song, Turn, 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 I looked at the seasons of our life and the fact that we go through life and we go through different seasons. And just because we're in our winter years, it does not mean that life is over with us yet. We have much wisdom we can pass on to others. So I trust you enjoyed that one. Well, we're probably going to one of the songs of the late 1970s, 80s today. This song pretty much stands alone as far as genre is concerned. And it's a really, really significant song. And, and in 1977 in London, two guys got together who were starting their career. Trevor Horn, who played bass and lead vocals and production. And Jeff Downs, who was just a keyboard wizard. Another guy that we could throw in there too is Bruce Woolley because he was the major songwriter for the song we're talking about today. Um, but before I get on to that song, just to talk a little bit more about the Buggles who we're talking about today. And so in 1977 they formed and then in 1980 came out this album, The Age of Plastic. And this is that's uh, Trevor Horn on the front cover and as you can see, by the way the cover is very much futuristic sci-fi and what can we possibly do to stretch production. I'll talk about the song that came off this album in a minute because it's a significant one. 1981, um, there was a couple of spots that opened up in the band Yes. Now interestingly about UK um, progressive rock in particular, there's a real family of, of bands that kind of just got on, got on with each other a little bit, particularly, yes, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, King Crimson, and another guy, Jethro Tull. A couple other bands that were floating around, we can think of bands like Genesis and Electric Light Orchestra and the Moody Blues. So a couple of spots vacated in, yes, John Anderson, John Anderson and Rick Wakeman, and so Trevor and Jeff became part of, yes, just for a little while. And that it was during that time that the album Drama was released for Yes. Yes kind of disbanded a little bit at that point, but as we know, Yes got back together a little bit later. Um, John Anderson came back into the throes. And then in 1982, out came the second Buggles album, Adventures in Modern Recording. It's very much the classic what this album is. It is stretching production to the absolute limit and seeing where we can go with production in albums. Now, Jeff Downs kind of uh, wasn't, wasn't so much into that. So he actually formed um, together with um, guys from Yes, uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer and Kareem Crimson, the supergroup Asia. And of course, I've talked about Asia before and their breakthrough song, Heat of the Moment, um, was absolutely massive for them. And he became a mainstay songwriter and keyboard player for Asia pretty well through to 2014. And, and Jeff Downs is renowned for the amazing number of keyboards that he has on stage with him just accentuating Asia's sound so well. Um, Trevor Horn, on the other hand, went on to become a producer with bands like ABC, um, Malcolm McLaren, yes, and I think Owner of the Lonely Heart is one of his production credits. Frankie Goes to Hollywood, can we remember the song Relax and Two Tribes Goes to War? And he won a Grammy Award with Seal with the song Kissed by a Rose, um, which came out to accompany a Batman movie. So he won a Grammy Award for that particular song. He's also a, a Brit Award and neither either Novello Award winner. He is a significant um, producer in the world of UK music. So a little bit about both of those guys who went on to who to get quite successful in their own individual rights with other acts. 
Now we can't talk about um, Buggle the Buggles without talking about the song Video Killed the Radio Star. Interestingly, this video was the first video to be ever played on MTV because MTV became a thing in the 1980s and this was the first video ever to be played on MTV. So there's always going to be a bit of a special place um, in the world because of that. And uh, Video Killed the Radio Star, if you haven't heard it, there's going to be some clips in the moment because believe it or not, I was talking to a young guy the other day. He had not heard of Billy Joel. I think this is just the way the world is today. Because if we think about Video Killed the Radio Star, it's 40 years old. So, you know, for people who are in their 20s, they may not have heard of this song. So there we go. So, such a significant song, this one. This was um, went number one in about 15, 16 countries, including the UK, Australia and Japan. Such was the significance of this song. This song took a long time to, to get right production-wise and to get all the elements in there to make it such a compelling song that it is. It was, a, it was ahead of its time and pushed production to the absolute um, nth degree that it could. Um, the, the lyrics are very simple. You know, we long for the days when, when radio was a thing. If you, if you got a song on the radio, you were doing really, really well. And the video came and changed all that. So instead of just um, being um, a, a song on the radio, you also had to do a video clip as well. And the Buggles well and truly did that with Video Killed the Radio Star. I think, you know, we do long for times gone by. We do long, long for the good old days. And we think about the fact that we used to be able to ride our bikes in the street. And remember when petrol, my dad used to fill up petrol for $2. That filled up the tank. We remember days when things didn't cost as much. We remember days of values and and of, 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 of things when we used to be able to get together more and all the rest of it. This is what this song is real and truly bringing into the world. It's bringing in nostalgia, longing for days gone by. But as we know now in this day and age today, the world, those days have kind of gone a little bit and we're now in a new world and we're still trying to work out a little bit what this world is. And certainly my hope is that some of the values um, that we held dear back then honesty and integrity and 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 all of those kind of values will be something that will carry us forward yes we need to be you know things need to be really really good now they need to be great now the millennial generation has challenged us to look at work and look at the way that we manage people and look at the way that we need to collaborate and be a team those kind of attributes are really, really good attributes that the millennial generation have well and truly brought into us. Because work isn't just something that we, we do, something that we're pushed into, and it's something that we want to make a positive contribution in. And so, you know, that's what the world of work is these days. Work is more than just doing. Work is actually being and work is one of these things that we carry with us, it would seem, with the multiple email addresses and the way that we can log online and do things these days. But yeah, I suppose Video Killed a Radio Star coming out in 1980 very much was in the days where radio was going and video was starting. And haven't we seen a plethora of music video clips since these days? So yes, um, Video Killed the Radio Star very much is in the bridge between these two spots. And I'm thinking it's very significant for that reason. Because we start saw the start of video. And with video, we saw the very much the stretching of production techniques to get is what the brilliance of the song Video Killed the Radio Star. So very much celebrating music today. We're celebrating the progressive rock movement of the UK and the fact that we had some exceptionally gifted musicians bringing some incredibly well-crafted, creative and brilliant songs. 
So we have a lot to, to, to thank the UK for with what they've brought to the world of music. We think about Beatles, bands like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and, and then bands like Yes and Asia and Legend Live Orchestra and the Moody Blues and Jethro Tull and Genesis. The, band, the list of bands just goes on and on and on. And we have the UK to thank for this progressive rock movement. And how cool is music when you can, if you're a muser yourself, how cool is it when you're doing it with other people? And certainly when you start flying around some bands like uh, like some of these guys in, in, in um, these bands have done, you really bring the world alive when you collaborate together. So if you're a muso, if you're just starting out, look for other people to play with because it is really, really good fun. Well, I trust that will all be an encouragement for you today. Now, if you are a millennial and you haven't heard the song Video Killed the Radio Star, I challenge you to look at this song and to realise how ahead of its time this particular song was and still is even today. And so, onto the clips. Well, when we look at Video Killed the Radio Star, there are a few, few things going on here. And by the way, all the links to all of these videos are in the description below. So I encourage you to look at those. We do have the official clip from 1979. As I said, this was the first video ever played on MTV. And very much futuristic, you know, the amount of uh, keyboards that Jeff is playing here, because Jeff Downs is on keyboards here. Trevor Horn is singing. And the glasses are a bit of a trademark of the Buggles well and truly. So we've got the official clip of 1979. And then who would have thought that in 2004, the Prince's Trust would have got the Buggles together to do a live version of Video Killed the Radio Star. When I stumbled across this, I was absolutely blown away by how lavishly produced this song was and how many people are needed to be on stage to actually pull this song off. So in 2004, yes, we have Jeff Downs here. We have we have Trevor Horn here amongst others and some of the original people that re recorded this particular song got together to do a live version of Video Killed the Radio Star. Just one of those moments in time that was pretty, pretty exciting. And then they did perform another song on that night, Living in a Plastic Age. This again came off the um, of the first album, The Age of Plastic, and it's an, again a live version of that one. So I encourage you to look at that one as well. And while we are talking about Video Killed the Radio Star, as I've said, this was an uh, this was a pretty iconic keyboard track, and and I thought I'd include a video of Jeff Downs just explaining some of the some of the music which he just does without any notes or any notes at all this some of the keyboard that was going on behind the scenes this song is in the key of G flat for those of you who are musicians you know that that's four flats and so everything's pretty much on black keys in this song and you know for me if I get past three flats I start to get a bit stressed out not for Jeff he just plays it if it's not a problem. He did study music and you can see how talented he actually is. Explaining in his very humble and non plus way just how Video Killed the Radio Star was actually written and some of the keyboard parts in it. So if you're a muso and want to know a little bit more about one of the guys that wrote, that pretty well played the keyboard part, that one's there as well. And as I said to you earlier, uh, there was another album released in 1982 called Adventures of Modern Recording. So I thought I'd just include the title track of that one and that's the official clip. So feel free to look at all of those or some of those, whatever you'd like to do. But at least look at Video Kill the Radio Star. You'll be glad you did. And to realise how ahead of its time even it is even now, I'm thinking, some 40 years after. And by the way, I've also included my last video from The Birds. So if you want to recap on that one, feel free to do so. Well, if you've come back for today, 
Thank you very much for doing so and hanging around to the end. It's fantastic. If you come here for the first time, welcome to this channel and uh, I hope it has been an encouragement for you today. So that's it for today. Next time, we're going to go on to one of the most quirkiest songs probably um, ever. And this is the song Rock Lobster. Yes, that's what the song is called. Rock Lobster, and it was the B-52s that brought this song to life. So until then, I'll catch you around.